Afrique Média. Le monde, c'est nous. Hello, thanks for joining us, uh, viewers of Afrique Media Television. Uh, it's time for views on the continent. We apologize for starting up a little late, but we always thank you for taking the rendezvous to stay with us on Afrique Media. And we discuss issues and events, updates on the African continent. And today on the program, we shall be discussing uh, visa-free travel across the African continent, its business, social, and security impact on the continent. Uh, it should be noted that recently President William Ruto of Kenya announced that Kenya's uh, borders would be open to visitors from the entire uh, uh, Africa with uh, no visa required, but uh, by the end of 2023, uh, in his words, he said, when people cannot travel, business people cannot travel, entrepreneurs cannot travel, we all become net losers. Uh, it should be noted a few days later, President uh, Paul Kagame of Rwanda followed suit saying all Africans will be able to enter Rwanda without visas. Neither Kenya nor Rwanda will be the first by the end of 2022. Benin, the Gambia and Seychelles had already implemented a system of visa-free access uh, for all Africans. Perhaps more will follow soon uh, some regions, uh, some sub-regional groups and some bilateral arrangements have also resulted in visa-free access and even passport-free access in certain cases uh, within the borders of uh, East African community. Uganda, Rwanda and Kenya allow cross-border travel without passports. Botswana and Namibia recently signed a similar uh, agreement. On the program today, we shall be discussing the visa-free travel across Africa. We, of course, noting it has significant business, social and security implications. What's your take on that? We shall equally be pleased to hear from you on today's program views on the continent. All right. Thanks very much for joining us. It's uh, a pleasure always uh, knowing that you are tuning to the Pan-African Television Afrique Media. And always we bring to you topics uh, of uh, prime interest uh, to the African continent. And today we're looking at visa-free travel. Uh, we are pleased to be joined uh, by Pan-African Pan Africanist and as well political and human rights advocate. Madam Viviana Yafo, it's a pleasure having you Afric Media. Welcome. Madam Vivian, I hear you, Lewis. yes, welcome to Views on the Continent, your life on the program. Thanks for accepting our invitation. Uh, can you get the feedback from you. here? Well, our technicians will do well for you to get the feedback from uh, here. And uh, we we discussing with you the visa-free uh, access to Africans and its implications, security, business, and social. But uh, Amaya, can you hear us? Can you get the feedback? I can hear you now. Thank you. Okay. And thanks for accepting the invitation once again, Madam uh, Viviana Yafo. You are a human uh, a political and human rights advocate as well as a Pan Africanist. And we'll be discussing uh, visa free uh, travel across Africa, its business, social, and security implications. Uh, since 2022, we've seen countries uh, opening it up borders to allow the free movement of uh, Africans. Uh, generally, you're a Pan-Africanist. What does the free movement of people mean to you in general terms before we shall be getting into finding out its implication on business, social, and security? How do you appreciate the fact that Africans will be able to move freely among uh, member states? Thank you so much, Louis. Thanks for having me. And uh, I want to use this opportunity to thank uh, uh, Afric Media for all they've been doing. I don't know how you all do it in the conditions that you all work, but I, I really appreciate all of you. Can you all hear me? Yeah, sure. We can hear you. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. So, um, yes, it, it, it all started with uh, a few countries, and now we have so many other countries following suit. Uh, uh, Rwanda, Kenya, um, and so many others following suit. 
Yeah. It's a great, great idea. It came a little bit late, right? But um, it's never too late to, to, to start up some of these things that have been happening in Europe and America and we've just been lagging behind. So it's a great thought. It's a great initiative. But it comes with a lot, a lot of um, pre-security apparatus that needs to put into place, infrastructural development that needs to be put in place um, before such huge endeavor can, can be ventured into. But I equally understand that some of these countries have been ready before getting into this, stepping into these countries like Rwanda. We all know that Rwanda has taken really some huge steps as far as uh, security is concerned, as far as infrastructural development is concerned. Um, these are some of the aspects that uh, when a country wants to open its borders and venture into visa-free uh, travel, um, it needs to be thought carefully through before these can be done. And so I applaud the efforts, but there are a lot, a lot of pushbacks that if not taken carefully, if not taken seriously, um, these ideas might fall short because uh, of some of those measures that needs to be put in place before these things are you know, these uh, uh, visa-free travels are ventured into. Thank you. All right. Uh, thanks very much, Madam Maya, for just like you said, uh, we're hoping that other countries will follow suit. But the issue is, you said um, it's coming a little late, but then we need to get going. What has been the greatest challenge uh, for countries not being able to open up borders among themselves? What do you think has was that issue that's been stopping this from happening? Like just like you said, we've seen it in Europe, America, but we're not seeing it happening in Africa. What has been the greatest challenge or setback? Thanks again for the question. I think uh, one of the most, uh, one of the biggest challenge that I think African countries have faced um, is trust. Okay. Right, the issue of trust amongst African countries, amongst Africans themselves, because when you look at um, just the normal day-to-day -day travel, when I travel uh, within the Americas, it is totally free. And, and less I remind that each and every state within the Americas is a state on its own, right? There is the state and the, and the federal government. And so each state, uh, could represent a country within the African continent, right? And so within these states, you travel freely. And then when you go to Europe, you talk about the Schengen, you know, travel, which is equally visa travel between um, each and every country within the, the European Union, right? But then when, when you come amongst us and, and you look at the way we've, we've done things, that trust level is not there. When I leave from the United States and, and travel within Cameroon, it is absolutely difficult to even get, um, get our own people trust me because I'm black, because I'm Cameroonian. They would rather look past a white person who, whom they don't know, right? That white person could be a criminal. That white person could be anybody who's just coming to take advantage of, of, of you know, uh, the country. And yet they don't know about these things yet. They trust, they prefer to trust the stranger, the foreigner, than who um, belong and who are Africans. And so that trust has not been there. Secondly, another aspect has been the fact that the leadership has made it entirely difficult for any kind of progress to, to take place. Because when you look all across Africa, dotted from north to south to east to west, you have uh, some of the most ruthless dictators 
who uh, have made life so difficult for even their own citizens, let alone uh, other Africans who are coming in. And so some of those measures that have been put in place isn't even helping because these some of these uh, um, rulers or leaders just don't want other foreigners who will come in and discover what is going on within their country and maybe kind of, you know, intoxicate their citizens or try to bring change or and, and so, so and so. That's point number two. Point number three is um, some of the reasons is because there has the continent has been flooded with conflict and wars and Nobody wants to open their borders, right, for refugees uh, coming into the country when citizens are already suffering enough in a continent that has more than enough to feed its citizens. In a country, in, in a continent that is considered one of the most blessed continents, both above and beyond. Above means you have great soils, you have great uh, climatic conditions. Beyond, you have all types of minerals, from gold, diamond, platinum, all sorts of mineral, minerals, oil buried under the earth in Africa. And so some of these, many of these have not even been tapped yet. Some have not even been discovered yet. And yet Africa remains the poorest continent. And yet Africa has not instituted uh, this visa-free thing. It is mostly, I think, because of insecurity within the countries and uh, outside the countries. But I think it's time we break past these insecurities. I think it's time our youths take control and make sure that they take their freedoms, they take their future, they take their destinies into their hands and make sure that some of these things that will benefit them actually happen. Thank you again. Thank you very much, Madam Vivian Ayafo. And you highlighted uh, the fact that Africans don't trust themselves and insecurity being one of the key or major reasons why a uh, country is not opening up their borders to uh, permit a free movement of people. Now, when we've seen this uh, gradually unfolding, do you think uh, these countries who are opening up their borders have just like you said, putting much security measures. And uh, how can this security be guaranteed? What are the aspects to consider uh, with regards to putting in place you know, security measures to uh, uh, effectively monitor those who get into the country and those who get out of the country? Uh, how easy can that be in setting up a security apparatus to monitor the free movement of people and those entering and going out of the country? Thanks again, Louis. This this is again. I mentioned in the beginning that um, it's it's a great idea. It's a great gesture. It's a great uh, avenue that uh, African countries are getting into. Mm. But it can get extremely chaotic and difficult to implement some of these things. Right? Some of these difficulties include. Um, and remember, when countries start opening their borders, let's 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 you know consider Rwanda as as one of our uh, examples, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's a country that every single uh, um, person in within the African continent or the world, you know, knows that you know they 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 are really really doing well as far as economic advancement is concerned. So when you look at a country like Rwanda and you consider how many thousands of people can, can begin to um, influx into that country uh, because of these, uh, these visa-free um, policies, it can become very overwhelming for some of the countries that have been doing well within the past um, few years, within, a, within this decade it can become really overwhelming, especially if they do not put restrictions, right? Um, and I say restrictions because even with visa-free travels, you still have to put some, implement some measures 
some restrictive measures to make sure that people don't just troll in economic refugees do not just troll in and out of the country and and secondly opening your borders equally means you're inviting all types of um all types of uh, people from within the african continent and this involves this this could involve or include drug dealers this, this could involve uh people who just do not have the good intent right to travel and so it it's gonna be a very difficult task and then infrastructure wise you have to have the infrastructure especially security infrastructure which is something i really doubt that three quarters of our countries have because uh first off um we need to be able to clean house before advancing into this and cleaning house means keep our continent at least a little bit safe from conflict from unnecessary unnecessary uh uh intertribal wars from um corrupt individuals within the government using the people's resources for personal gains right because corruption leads to a lot of these uh malfeasances a lot of um our citizens traveling from one country to another and so before opening borders some of these things needs to be taken into perspective then when you look at the travel itself air land travel how do we ensure that at at both ends um um via land via air some of these countries are able to actually enforce uh uh border control right visa free doesn't mean that you just going to carry your bags and walk in, into any other country without at least being checked which citizen are you mm. where are you coming from it doesn't mean that let people not get confused because a lot of people hearing that oh um um Rwanda Kenya and many of these uh Seychelles and many of these countries that have opened their borders um will just let low and say hey you know you can come in as as far as you are you are an african no that's not the way it works mm -hmm. you still going to be checked you still going to be processed within the borders before you let in so do we have that capacity that security capacity do we have that security um um clearance that is good enough to stand the populations that we can potentially face in fluxing into these countries that have opened their borders so these are some of the questions that we really need to ask before venturing into these mm -hmm. thanks again Thanks again ma'am. We're looking at the security uh, uh concerns here and the implications uh, we are on the aspect of security and we we'll look at the fact that uh, several countries struggle with uh, the low job and the job market is equally an issue at stake. Do you think this uh, free movement is going to affect uh the local job market? How people get jobs and do you think that maybe foreigners could easily get into your country and uh which would definitely or potentially affect the local job market how do you see these with regards to the job local job market does it pose any risks to the local job market uh, absolutely louis you've touched a very important uh aspect of this yes it will affect the job mar market tremendously let's take a uh, um Uh, a quick study on what has been happening in South Africa, right? Mm -hmm. South Africa has has seen we've seen some of the most uh atrocious videos coming from South Africa because the indigenous of South Africa believe that um their country belongs to them. And so any other uh citizen whether coming from within the continent doesn't belong there. and the claim the number one claim has been the fact that uh, other african countries come in and take the jobs that belong to them and you see that all over the world it's not just in south africa it's not only 
um, uh, from within the continent. It, 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 it is here within the U.S. When um, U.S. Uh, citizens, uh, you know, quote unquote, U.S. claimed citizens um, always feel like um, Africans come here and and Africans or Hispanics or Asians come here and take the jobs that they're supposed to do. The question is, are the indigenous actually doing the jobs, right? And if those citizens leave those countries, will th those jobs be filled by indigenous, by citizens? Right. So those are some of the questions. Bali, I definitely understand uh, and, and, I, and I feel the plight of the indigenous people uh, sometimes because when, when you or when citizens leave their country on economic refugee basis or on economic travel basis, they are leaving um, um, forcefully because they cannot obtain jobs in their home countries. They are in search of greener pastures in those uh, new adopted countries. And so this is some of the, this is just one of the aspects that I mentioned that needs to be taken care of. Uh, people don't have to be traveling. Citizens of Africa don't need to be traveling um, um, most because they're looking for jobs. The home countries need to take care of their citizens. The home countries need to ensure that their citizens are not going out there to other countries in search of jobs, mm -hmm. okay? They need to be traveling because they are going to those new countries either to, to add to, to, to what is already there, right? Either to, 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 for job advancement. Job ad advancement simply means, um, let's say as a Cameroonian, right? You leave Cameroon because you've had, you know, uh, uh, an advancement opportunity or um, uh, one of media's in the, you know, request for you to come over there and do some kind of training, or you know, you're leaving Rwanda because you're 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 uh, going into uh, Cameroon or going into Nigeria because you're trying to you know gain more knowledge or uh, learn more. Uh, on how to uh, make better of what you already do, but not because you are actually seeking for menial jobs in that new country. And so these are some of the things that we need to first take care of. Our individual countries need to make sure that the youth are employed. We need to make sure that the leadership is working. We need to curb the malfeasance. We need to curb the, curb the corrupt activity that exists within our countries individually before we can venture into activities like this. Because if not, we are only going to be creating more chaos than it already exists. A lot of countries are going to uh, find themselves emptying into most other countries that are also struggling but are more advanced than 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 a lot of uh, our African countries. So, thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Vivian Ayafo. You just highlighted some of the measures that should be put in place to ensure the visa-free travel that will definitely promote inclusive and benefit all segments of society. We very much appreciate that. And we were looking at uh, some of the implications of visa-free travel in Africa, and we're on the aspect of uh, security. Now, let's look at uh, possibly the economic implications of uh, visa-free travel um, across Africa. Uh, what do you think, uh, and uh, how will visa-free travel uh, within Africa impact inter that uh, intracontinental trade and economic growth? Do you see this uh, practically or positively benefiting uh, economic uh, aspects and how do you see the free movement impacting the economic sector? Will it be a much plus or do you think there are going to be some constraints? Thanks again, um, Lois. I, I definitely, um, again, even though warning on so many uh, security apparatus and infrastructure apparatus to be put in place before it's ventured into, 
But once accomplished, once all is said and done, it is a great, great, it will potentially be a great uh, um, avenue for Africans and, and, and African countries to be able to trust one another again, to be able to trade with one another again, to be able to um, um, flourish, flourish in the aspects of uh, technology, in the aspects of medical advancement, in the aspects of infrastructural um, um, advancement, because once these start happening, countries start exchanging ideas um, on uh, technology, uh, advancement on infrastructural advancement on medical advancement because guess what when when youth start leaving one country to another right they learn a lot just like when we leave the continent and, and come abroad we learn a lot and then when we come back to our home countries we empower our people we we impact some of the knowledge that we've learned and not let's not forget that there is brain uh, 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 gain, mm. right within yeah. the continent. That brain gain stays within the continent. That 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 exchange of ideas is extremely important for economic development, for social development, and for technological advancement and development. It is crucially important because they say. Um, when, when we run as individuals, when a country runs alone, it runs fast. But when a country runs with other countries within the continent, within the global world, it runs even fastest, right? And so I think it's a great, great idea if potentially um, uh, implemented right, if pot potentially um, uh, if some feasibility studies are done properly, it will potentially be a very, very explosive idea positively uh, for the people of Africa and, and, and the African continent as a whole and the global world. Thank you. Okay. And when we talk about the free movement or restrictions removed on free on movement, do you think that this should equally apply to the goods and possibly services which will definitely accompany those who be moving from maybe one country to another? What do you think about the goods and the services? Will it equally be free from taxes? And, uh, you know, what do you think about that? That's, that's an aspect that needs to be looked upon, right? And, mm. and some of these... Uh, free quote unquote uh free visa or free trade will be considered between from country to country for example between cameroon and nigeria cameroon can decide or nigeria can decide that um we are going to have some some particular goods imported from cameroon to nigeria free of charge tax free and stuff and then in return this is what we get. It's 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 a matter of countries within the continent deciding. Okay, what do I deal with? Who do I deal with? And 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 what are the conditions put in place? What's the feasibility studies done to make sure that some of these free services or free goods are actually free? Because again, Lewis. They might yeah. tell us, you know, uh, this this particular um, aspect is free. And then when you come to find out, it is not actually free, right? And so some of these things really needs to be studied. They need to be looked upon. Our authorities need to do their homework, which is what I doubt will be done, knowing, knowing where we all come from. I just hope and pray that when this eventually takes off, it, it doesn't come another chaos that the continent is going to be dealing with because it will explode. The other day when I watched um, the, the news that um, a plane that had, had left Nigeria heading to Saudi Arabia was returned and all visas revoked in the air, 
I could only imagine the humiliation, the, the, the consequences of such act. And it's happening in the middle of um, the, the, the Saudi uh, Africa summit. So this calls this, these are some of the, the, the um, these are some of the measures that have been taken against the African continent and its citizens. That should motivate us. That should wake us up. That should get us, you know, scratching our heads and waking up and questioning. Why are we succumbing to such disgrace from the world, to such humiliation from countries that should not even be competing with the world? Saudi shouldn't be competing with Africa. Saudi shouldn't be competing with, with, with our continent, with any country within the continent. But because we find ourselves where we are with mismanagement, corruption, um, leaders who know not how to lead, these are some of the consequences. And I think um, we as Africans need to sit back and look at some of these things and get angry enough really angry enough to wake up and start dealing with each other and start communicating with each other and start trusting each other. Because if we continue the way we are, it could get even worse. Mm. Thank you, Lois. Thank you once again, Madam Viviana Yafo. And you've just highlighted another very important aspect, the fact that Africans for very long have not been able to speak in a single voice and not having that uh, single diplomatic voice is the reason why we're facing some of the humiliations that we are uh, uh, facing just like you highlighted uh, earlier. And this equally affects uh, the uh, decisions which will be taken among member states. If we're able to speak in one voice, Madam Vivian Ayafo, do you see the decisions or policies which will be put in place to manage the free movement of people? Do you think uh, it could be well managed, considering equally that the uh, the Pan-African body, the African Union, which is supposed to oversee uh, the effective implementation or manage some of the lapses or shortcomings which might arise as a result of uh, these uh, free movements, it's equally, uh, many call it uh, a negotiation that, of course, is, it's dead. Its decisions cannot actually, uh, you know, are not very much uh, effective. Now, the fact that we don't speak in one voice and the fact that there's no overall institution to overlook the policies which we put in place, do you see it lasting uh, for long? Is there a sustainable, do you see, uh, uh, how can it be sustained, the decisions and policies which surrounds free movement of uh, people? The answer to that question is, <laughs> uh, is is a heavy no. It's unfortunately it's it's a heavy no. Policies of this magnitude, if if you notice, uh, the European Union only flourishes and does well in in some of these policies because within the European Union uh, itself, uh, its citizens do not need to be economic refugees. They don't need to. They travel because um, um, because of tourism. They travel because they want to discover places. They travel because they want to uh, impact their knowledge um, upon their continent. They do not travel because of conflicts. They do not travel because of refugee uh, uh, status, uh, seeking for asylum you know, uh, majorly, they don't. So um, my answer to that question is no. The continent, as far as um, its um, unity of purpose, um, 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 status is concerned, it's, it's a no for me because the AU itself has been incapable to bring uh, the leadership or call the leadership of a uh, uh, Africa to order. Because when you look at what has been going on within our continent within the past decade or two, um, if the African Union was serious enough 
it could have called to order a lot, a lot of these things that have been going on, a lot of the wars, a lot of the 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 um, um, economic uh, uh, malfeasance and and just some of the things that have kept our continent uh, uh, under you know the the the, the rubble and so far that institution has not been able to call itself its members to order let alone <laughs> taking up measures that will enhance or enforce some kind of order within the continent and so um that explains my reason why um from get-go i mentioned that several several things need to be accomplished before some of these free visa uh, um, measures are instituted. Because if not, how would you think that the main institution, the main organization, uh, namely the AU, which is supposed to bring order, which is supposed to um, um, sit together and set some of those security rules and set some of those economic rules and set some of those political rules, you know, sociopolitical rules that binds a lot of these things. Remember, the EU had to actually sit down and draft some of the major, major, uh, major, uh, 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 um, um, you know, some of major uh, uh, institutions that were going to bind the Schengen visa uh, travel thing, right? And so at this point, we don't have that in place. We don't have even leaders within the, the AU who can sit and look at each other in the eye and talk. How do we accomplish this? Who sits down? We don't have level-headedness amongst our, our, our leaders. And so when, when one leader says, oh, this is what I want, this is what I don't want, the other leader counteracts and, 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 and says, oh, no. Uh, we cannot do this because um, this or that leader might only want, want what benefits him personally and, and, his, and his small circle and not what benefits the, the entire country. And I think that that's what has been really, really troubling within the African continent because our leaders really do not, um, the, the measures our leaders take have never been measures that benefit the African youth, the African continent, and the overall uh, well-being of us. It has always been measures that benefit them and their little circle. And I'm hoping and praying that before some of these measures are put in place, Lois, some of these things need to be thought about. Hmm. And it starts from the leadership it starts from the leadership there has to be a change of leadership for this to succeed the youths need to start taking control the youths needs to start rising up and standing up and speaking up okay and taking control of their future and destinies mm. thank you thanks again madam uh, viviana yafo and uh, you could have highlighted the aspects of uh, we understand several African countries are facing aspects of insecurity, drought, hunger, uh, as well as those uh, running away from conflict, which is different from the way people travel in the, the EU, which mostly is for tourism purposes and others. But mostly in Africa, the mm -hmm. travels has to do with those fleeing from conflict and those uh, running away from drought and those uh, who are possibly seeking asylum and others. How do we reconciliate this? How do we leaders are able to manage this situation? Uh, considering someone running into your country because of free visa and equally considering the running away from war, how will this be managed? So it's a bit challenging. How do you think countries uh, uh, can be able to manage this? Oh, should we say the visa free will definitely have put up policies that will have a limited period of uh, validity. How do we reconcile that? 
So again, these are some of the apparatus that needs to be talked about. These are some of the feasibility studies that needs to be done within the AU, right? Mm -hmm. Within the leadership in order for some of these things to be implemented. Because if not, we will see again, and we will see an influx of travel, an influx of both immigration and immigration, not for the purpose of, of um, you know, uh, durable travel or, or uh, technological or infrastructural advancement travel or, um, um, you know, just travel because you want to discover um, the, the continent. You would rather see an influx of uh, people traveling because of hunger, because of conflicts, you know, seeking uh, refugee uh, status uh, or asylum status from other countries. Um, you will see people traveling because, and, and, and again, um, I don't see who leaves um, um, Nigeria to Cameroon for, you know, economic advancement right because it's like you're jumping from fire to uh, um, a more dangerous or from a fry pan to, from fire pan to fire right because cameroonians themselves are seeking for jobs and then you leave nigeria coming to cameroon to seek for jobs that's already a potential trouble that's already a potential problem and it might even lead to more uh, xenophobia within the African continent. That's another very potential danger that we could be looking at. And so um, personally, I would really urge that this policy needs to be looked at as good as it sounds and looks. It could be a huge, huge threat from within the continent. It could actually throw the continent into more chaos. Some of these conflicts needs to be resolved. How does it get resolved? Again, going back to the AU, the AU takes responsibility. The AU should wake up, the AU should sit up and seek solutions to some of these conflicts. Okay. Within Cameroon, within Congo, Ethiopia, Every single where is dotted with conflict. So let's resolve, let's clean house. Let the AU wake up. Yeah, okay. thank you. Thank you, Madam Viviana Yafo. Let the AU do its job, wake up and clean the house and be able to put up policies that will favor uh, this uh, lofty initiative from coming uh, from uh, you know, been accomplished. And equally, Madam Viviana, yeah, for you are a Pan-Africanist, and most times, uh, many Pan-Africanists believe that some of uh, the failed decisions we have in Africa is as a result of the hand of the West, you know, complicating issues. Do you think that the West uh, will welcome this initiative, Africans moving freely amongst themselves, and equally considering the African continental free trade, which will be coming up in place, uh, which has to do with uh, a b bigger market, Considering all of these, what do you think or what role do you think the West is playing vis-a-vis, -vis, uh, you know, the free movement of people and the implementation of the African Continental Free Trade uh, Agreement? Louis, my answer to that is <laughs> we need to move past the West. We need to stop blaming the West. We need to, the West has been in our vocabulary for so long. It is, it is, it is becoming too redundant. It is becoming, um, uh, it is becoming an excuse yeah, that we, we, we use, like we, we that excuse is old. It's, yeah. it's old. Yes, but I'm it's for, old. The we West at, cannot we, stop us. Mm -hmm. Yes, go ahead, please. Yeah, we we'll look at what happened in Mali recently and, is, uh, and in Niger as well. We understand the role that uh, the West, especially France, is playing in uh, you know sponsoring insecurity in Mali, especially, and of course in uh, in Niger. And this way, because of the evidence that were uh, 
uh, produced by the Niger or Nigerian Armed Forces as well as the Malian Armed Forces. Uh, France has been being behind sponsoring of terrorism in, in, in most of those, in those countries. We are talking about the fact that the France has been uh, one of the reasons why there are some things are not moving or one of the reasons why we have insecurity in Africa, which of course, you know, insecurity is one of the, uh, uh, you know, the reasons why we're not having some of these initiatives uh, taking off or working out effectively. That's, of course, the rule of the ways, and that's why we sometimes blame the ways. Don't you think something could be done with regards Lewis, to... Louis, yeah. what, 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 what stops us from cutting those ties, right? Mali, you Mali mentioned trying, Mali, exactly. you mentioned yeah. Niger, you mentioned Niger, which uh, there is Burkina Faso. Exactly. Um, these countries have done what we thought was impossible, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. They have cut that umbilical cord that connects them with the West, France, precisely. Oh. And so looking into 2024, we find that Niger is rising up to be one of the top countries economically, right? Competing with the world. Um, Burkina Faso, same. Why can't we cut those umbilical cords? Why can't the AU cut that umbilical cord that connects them with the West? You know why? Because um, the West sponsors the AU. The West pays the AU's bills. The West takes care of, care of basically the most basics that the AU is supposed to be taken care of. And, and, and reasons being that, for legitimate reasons, I'm not going to blame the West when they, you know, put that stranglehold on, on us because the world is a very, very, you know, um, 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 aggressive place. The world is not, you know, a place where you're going to come and have, you know, people just, just pamper you and get you spoiled. No, there is no spoiling in this world. You get up, you, you fight for what you truly believe in. And so within the, 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 the AU sits people who want the, a, who want the, the, the West support in other for their legitimacy to be acknowledged, right? They don't need legitimacy from their own people within the continent. They need legitimacy from the West because if the West doesn't legitimate them, right, they're out. And so look at Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger. One of the reasons why you will find these countries prosperous in the next few years is because they have damned consequences they don't care they want their people not to suffer they care about their people and not what the what the west thinks and that's why you will find them go even further look at rwanda rwanda is advancing because rwanda cares about rwandese okay and so these are some of the things that we, we, we need to take a look at. And that's why I keep emphasizing that if the youth really care about Africa, if the youth really care about Cameroon, Nigeria, um, Congo, Togo, Equatoria, Guinea, within these countries sit a leadership that doesn't want to leave power, that wants to strangle hold on power. The youth needs to take their position. These same leadership sits at the AU, making decisions that benefits them and them and them only, and not African youths. They would prefer African youths to run in prison. They would prefer African youths, journalists like you, to not tell the truth. Because when you dare tell the truth, your name 
is either death or life imprisonment. Mm. But times are changing. And I think Africa, there is a reawakening in Africa. And um, whoever sits at the AU is not going to be there forever. When the youths take over, trust me, Africa is going to be, there's going to be a new, new reawakening within that continent. And I pray every single day that that should happen. Not one person can do that, not two, not three. It takes the millions, the millions. African youth are seen to be very resourceful, very intelligent, come out here and go into hospitals, Lois. You find mostly Africans as top-notch surgeons, medical doctors, engineers, lawyers, name a few hmm. just to name a few africans are extremely intelligent go back in history a lot of the inventions that the the west has improved on today started from within the continent we all know that and so i think what we lack within the continent is leadership and, and as long as that leadership is not there we will keep crawling and creeping until we stand up and speak up and wake up. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Madam Aya, for times are changing and uh, there is a reawakening. And the big question is who uh, it's next, of course, to, uh, to put in place a visa restriction. And uh, the big question, who do you think is next that will adopt the visa free uh, movement of people. Do you see more African countries coming on board and opening up its uh, visa restrictions? Uh, when do you think or how do you see this unfolding uh, within the shortest time possible? Do you see every African country being able to open up their borders? I see more African countries opening up their borders uh, in, in the media. <laughs> but not in practice, mm. <laughs> unfortunately, <Okay. laughs> unfortunately. And, and reasons being that they, they want to belong, right. right? But not necessarily. They want to talk the talk and not walk the walk. That's another aspect that yeah. that might potentially happen because uh, some, some, of, some of our countries that we already know of might want to um, um, uh, take part, might yeah. want to be a part of this great gesture, mm -hmm. but not be willing to spend the money to put the security measures, the, the infrastructure measures in place. Because, for example, let me give you one typical example. If, if there has to be visa-free vi visa uh, travel between uh, a country like, um, let's take, for example, um, um, or countries from the east uh, to the west, right? Um, from from the from East Africa to West Africa, you start looking at uh, some of those really dire need infrastructures like great roads, right? Mm -hmm. Like um, 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 a train, uh, one of the fastest trains that could ever exist from east to west. Those are infrastructural development uh, projects that needs to be put in place, mm -hmm. right? And so. Um, when, when you look at some of these um, aspects, it's challenging, first of all, for countries to, 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 to get in place because once those, and I don't doubt that the first thing they're going to do is run to the West, right, to ask for or to IMF and, 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 and you know, all these uh, organizations that provide them funds. But then when the funds are given, are they really put into those projects? As a matter of fact, 1% of those funds will be utilized and nothing will be accomplished. And so it will end up being talk, 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 and no action at the end of the day. So yes, I agree, more countries will come on board, but are they going to talk or walk their talk? Big question mark. Okay. Do you think so, Luke? 
Well, it's a, it's a wait and see. It's a wish, and uh, we're hoping that it, it happens. So, uh, Madam Vivian, just uh, one last question before we, we run off. It's brief, and just what do you believe? Do you think and do you see uh, free movement transforming Africa's economy? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Yes. So, uh, if done right. Okay. It will it will um it will explode okay. the the African economy from north to south, from east to west. That there is not a doubt in my mind. Okay. But feasibility studies have to be done for this to happen rightly. Thank you. Any last message, of course, you focus more on the young people of Africa and telling them it's time. Uh, times are changing, and uh, of course, the young people, you're calling them on board. So any last message before we, we, we leave? My, my message, thank you so much. My message, Louis, is for uh, young, intelligent, um, prospective engineers, doctors, surgeons, lawyers, uh, people of all walks of life, um, especially, especially, most especially, um, people like you, um, please wake up, please let's, let's fix the Africa that we want to see. Let us look at countries like young people, like Traore, uh, and, and many of those who have taken who have mounted the guts to wake up and say to hell with the West, to hell with anyone who do not want our progress, we would thrive, we would survive, whether the world or the West likes it or not. Enough of the, the, the negativity, enough of the mistrust, enough of the, the, the disregard for our skin color, enough of the disregard for us as a people, enough of the praying, enough of the singing in church. And I am not an atheist. I am not, on the other hand, I am not the, the church goer every Sunday to preach what is not there. But I am that person who believes that when you pray, you act. I am that person who believes that. Manna has never fallen from heaven. Let nobody deceive no youth. Please, the Bible, we all, they have fooled us with. And we run around and carry it like our historical book was written by people who claim are righteous, but they're the same people who enslaved our ancestors. They're the same people who killed us. They're the same people who claim Africans, if they don't do good, they go to hell. It's a lie. It's a fallacy. Please leave life on earth. Wake up. Go find a job. Stop praying because praying doesn't give jobs. It doesn't. It only helps you morally, psychologically, but it doesn't give you a job. It doesn't put food on your table. Let no one deceive you. And when you work, do not take your money to church because God doesn't take your money. God gives you money. And so please, our young people need to rise up. Our young people need to take the, 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 their future and, and, and their um, um, they need to take their future into their hands. Mm. They need to work hard. They need to get into different traits. They need to st study skills and not history. They need to study their own history. If at all, they, they would study history. It has to be their history. Please, wake up. African youth, please. Mm. I am begging and pleading that our young boys and girls take their futures, take their destinies into their hands and work extremely hard 
because we are not sleeping out here. We are not. We're doing everything it takes to make sure that our continent changes from the old hands to the youth, youthful hands, to your hands. And we cannot place the continent in your hands if you're incapable of handling it either. So thank you so much, Louis. Thanks for doing this. This has to be done uh, um, um, on a regular basis so that the message sinks in, so that our young people wake, wake up. I want to see you bring some of our youths into your into African media so they can speak their mind and speak their mind freely and tell their governments what they want and how they want it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Vivian Ayafo. You are a political and human rights advocate as well as a Pan-Africanist. It was a pleasure having you on today's program, uh, Views in the Continent. We thank you very much for your submissions and all what you've said. I hope uh, Africa has been listening, of course, and thanks very much. We're discussing on the implications of uh, free travels around Africa uh, on business, security, and social. And we, of course, will be coming back here to discuss on more as countries will be subscribing or open up their borders or, or removing their visa restrictions to permit the free movement of Africans among uh, across uh, the African continent. Who is next to, of course, uh, is visa restriction. We equally going to hope that more countries subscribe to that. Until we meet again, we want to thank you so very much to being part of today's program. We appreciate you for always tuning in to the Pan African Television Africa Media. Don't you forget, more programs are yours right ahead. And we want to thank you for watching. Thanks, Madam uh, Vivian Ayafo, for being part of the program. And thanks to our technicians. Until we meet again, bye bye for now. Stay with us. Afrique Média, le monde, c'est nous.